Hey, hi, welcome to Bandai Automation. So in this tutorial, we'll talk about how we can send a post request using the HTTP client classes. I have a sample post request, which, which has a simple uh, JSON request. Uh, basically, it has name and job. And in the expected uh, response, we'll be getting the ID and created at, right? And the status code is 201, which is expected for a post call, right? So let's look at how we can uh, uh, code this up, yeah? Uh, so first we'll, we'll start by creating a data model for the name and job so i'll be writing property files for these two okay so since we are in the series of the spec flow, we'll just write this in terms of scenario and feature. But anyone watching this video just to see how we can send a post request, uh, you needn't be bothered by this. You can you can just see the logic that I'm writing and you can just write it in a method and just call it from your class. Yeah. So let's look at the our let's look our post.feature file. So basically I have uh, two steps here within the scenario. Uh, given the user sends a post request with the URL as this. So this is the same uh, post request uh, URL here. Yeah? and then the user should get a success response so let's see how we can uh, write the corresponding uh, code so i'll do a right click and uh, go to the definitions so basically it will take me to this uh, step definition file which has the binding right uh, so you can just ignore all the rest of the stuff so basically uh, I've, I've created uh, certain uh, initializations here right so i've i have uh, Created reference for HTTP client, HTTP response, and I've I've I have given a string as response body, and within the constructor I have created the object of the HTTP client class. Okay, so let's first uh, initialize our uh, post data, right? So let's first serialize this data. We'll be using JSON convert. So this we get this JSON convert from the Newtons of JSON library. Okay, using so basically a NuGet package. And I've covered this pre in my previous videos how to deserialize your JSON to C sharp object and serialize the same thing, right? So it, I've covered this in in detail video. I, I'll send this. I'll put this up in the uh, description, right? So let's see how we can serialize this, right? So I'll just do serialize object and I'll pass the post data here. So this will return uh, some string data. Now let's wrap this. Let's wrap this in the string content. Okay, I'll I'll uh, we have created an object of this string content, and I'll tell you why are we doing this. Okay. So now let's have the HTTP client and call our main method, which is called the post sync. Okay. So if we see this post async and what it, what it requires within the parameters right so it says that string request uri which is the one that we are get that we are getting it from a feature file string uri and the other one is if you see the other other uh, value which is required here it says http content right http content so if i show you the definition of uh, string content right what what the class does provides http content based on a string so that's the reason we are just uh, wrapping this a string uh, f uh, so that you know it, it's feasible to be sent as a uh, HTTP content okay so now this returns a response HTTP response message so let's just send it back and uh, since we are uh, 
since we are writing an asynchronous code and this is part of the task threading we have to just write the await and async task here okay now let's just print this so but before printing this let's uh, uh, write this in uh, you know printable manner uh, in terms of string right response dot content dot uh, read as string or sync okay. see it says that again the same thing uh, if you see the error code it says cannot implicitly convert type system threading task to string so so we have to just add the await here and the uh, error will vanish okay so let's just uh, print this response response body sorry so basically we have to create we have to call the right line method okay awesome so we are done with the actual logic of how we are supposed to do right so just to give you a recap uh, we serialized the data that we got and then we wrapped it with the string content and uh, that gives you actually the HTTP content by the way and within the HTTP content or post async we have to pass the URI and the data right so and just to print the response we have we wanted that in terms of the string right so we uh, so we are, we are just printing it in the console dot line. Let's go to the second method, which says that the user should get a success response, right? So let's uh, let's write a assertion here. Okay, assert dot true. Assert dot true. Response dot is success status code. Okay. So now basically, if you see what this what this does is the response dot is success state is status code is uh, if th if the status code was in the range of 200 to 299 it returns true else it, re it returns false so basically this is how we are asserting it so let's just run this okay so let me just expand this for you okay so if you see this response that I was talking about, we got the ID as 978 and created at uh, that, right? So that is that is exactly what we wanted, right? So ID and created. So ignore these two uh, name and job. Uh, you don't get it nowadays. So but yeah, the rest of the stuff is correct. And even your assertion has passed. Okay, so else uh, it would have failed, right? So this is how you would work with a normal post. But uh, but this ideally is not the right way to uh, send your post request we'll be using the uh, send method send async right and that is primarily the main method wherein you know uh, we'll understand how the send async works and uh, how to send the headers to it and what are the different header classes so we'll cover that we'll cover that in the upcoming uh, videos so hope you like the video please uh, comment uh, like and subscribe yeah thank you